This is Echo 3, and let's discuss using a push-pull configuration for our propeller-driven airplane. A configuration like this does offer us several advantages. One of the main being is it lets us have reduced drag because both of our engines are in line with each other. It also means that we can put two engines in line with the center of mass of the airplane. That lets us have a propeller driven airplane that is a lot easier to control and because we are using counter rotating propellers we don't have to worry about unusual roll and yaw characteristics caused by a single engine propeller. It also lets us have a lot more options if we lose power on one engine because both engines are in line with the center of mass. This airplane does have some downsides in real life. The rear engine, because it is in the airflow of the front propeller blades, can see reduced efficiency down to 85% of normal. But for the game, we don't have to worry about that. Let's go ahead and try building this type of aircraft. This is somewhat influenced by a modern aircraft called the Atom A500. It's a civilian utility plane. So we'll put our cockpit. We don't need the oxidizer in these fuel tanks. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of them. I want the smaller fuel tanks. That's why I'm going with that because we just aren't going to need that much. Let's go ahead and set up our motors. I'm going to go with about 40% of the power. That's going to let us really run these blades at full RPMs. So I'm going to use the fan blades. They are a little heavier than the regular propeller blades, but they do have a lot more surface area. So it lets us really move a lot of air pretty easily with them. And with the more powerful engine, we'll be able to handle that pretty well. The striped side of the propeller blades does need to go towards the front. So that's what I'm making sure I'm using the move, the rotate tool here to ensure that they are set up properly. We'll go ahead and throw on a nose cone, help us reduce drag just a little bit on the front end, and we'll clip it in just a little bit, make that look nice. Then we will go ahead and set up a few things here. I'd like to put on our Cal 1000. The Cal 1000 will be how we control the blade deployment angle. So I'm going to go ahead and bind the blades to the Cal 1000 and we're going to set up our other action groups here. I like to unbind the brakes from the motor and just make the motor brake set to the abort action group. And then I like to have RCS bound to the motor power. It just makes turning on the engine a little easier. Then we'll go ahead and copy and paste that whole front section to the back. And it looks like our motor action groups, our engine action groups, got copied over, but our blades did not. So I'll have to click on the blades and set their deployment angle on the black ones to be bound to the Cal 1000 as well. Now we'll go ahead and set up the Cal 1000. We're going to set the deployment angle of the blades to go from zero to 45 degrees and we'll copy and paste both values. Now these will be controlled by our main throttle and so that's how we'll decide what the pitch of the blades will be. Now we're going to go ahead and set up this back side a little bit because the engine is facing backwards I'm going to set it up appropriately so the motor is reversed there and then I'm making this a counterclockwise motor and counterclockwise blades so they will be spinning in opposite directions. Test with my Cal 1000 everything looks like it's working as it should so we will go ahead and work on the rest of this plane. We're gonna need wings. I'm gonna go with these small wings. I really wanna see how fast I can push this airplane so these smaller wings will have reduced drag but will still get us enough lift for this airplane. Go ahead and use the absolute move tool to make sure they are all lined up with each other. That is a handy feature with the absolute move tool. You can make sure that things are lined up as they should be. Now, I'm inspired by the Atom 500 airplane, so I'm going to use these air intakes as our booms. They're a lot lighter. In the past, I have tried using some structural pieces, but I found these air intakes are just a lot lighter, so with the less mass, we don't have to do as much work with our engines. I'm going to 
offset them back here and just use the offset tool to get this where I want it. Then we will go ahead and put on some vertical stabilizers then on top of our boom. The Cessna 02, it was used by the United States Air Force and the U.S. Army as a reconnaissance plane during Vietnam and even all the way till 2010 when the last one was finally retired had a twin boom similar to this. The advantage of having twin booms like this is that we can then put our rear wings higher up and out of the airstream of the propeller blades. Not something we really have to worry about in the game because the game doesn't model fluid dynamics, but something that a rear airplane would deal with. So I'm doing something similar. It also can let us have parts higher up just a little bit so that we won't have as many problems with takeoff. One issue when designing a plane like this is you have to account for how the plane is going to rotate during takeoff and you don't want your rear propeller blades to strike the ground. Some of the most successful use of push-pull airplanes were actually flying boats, the largest being made by Dornier. It had 12 engines. Another notable push-pull airplane was the Rutan Model 76 Voyager. It was the first airplane to fly entirely around the world non-stop without refueling. Some of the earliest examples of push-pull airplanes go all the way back to World War I. They were invented by the Germans, although they literally didn't go anywhere. Some of them crashed even on their maiden flights. There were still many other obstacles to overcome, especially with wing design that planes like this would take a few more years to mature, but eventually they would, and several different models during World War II would even be worked on, specifically, again, by the Germans. I'm going to work with my main wing here just a little bit. I'm going to give it a little bit of angle of incidence, so I'm going to use the fine rotate tool and tilt the main wing up about five degrees. That will increase the angle of attack, but then I'm going to undo what I did there with the boom so the rear wing is still level. Then I'm going to move my main wing back just a little bit so that my center of aerodynamic pressure is just a little bit behind my center of mass. This should give me a fairly stable platform to work off of, but it's also going to give me better aerodynamics because my center line of the fuselage is not going to experience as much drag. I'm going to add just a little bit more fuel. So I'm adding these little fuel tanks on the side of the wing and I'm also going to tilt them so that they are going to fly straight with the airflow as well. So the one fine movement with the rotate tool there. Let's add some landing gear. We're going to use just the small landing gear and I'm going to reverse the one to put it on the front. So I'm going to use a tricycle configuration. That's probably going to work pretty well because we have twin booms like this. Then I'll put the rear landing gear on the boom. I want to put the rear landing gear as close to the center of mass as possible, but I do need to account for the propeller blades and the back of the airplane, so I don't want to have any kind of tail strike or break anything as I rotate the plane up during takeoff. So that's what I'm just trying to be careful with here. I'm going to put the gear down just a little bit. Try to keep it mostly level with the front gear. I'm just eyeballing that. That should be pretty good. This plane, I think, is about ready for a test flight again. See if we can get it maybe flying a little faster than what I had it flying before. And I'm pretty sure that we'll be able to do that. I'm going to use auto strut to grandparent part on all of the wings. That just helps them keep their shape a little better, keep them a little stronger during the flight. I'm going to test fly this one more time and see if I can fly just a little faster. Last time I got up to 270 meters per second. I think I can get just a little faster if I work on flying level. And I end up do getting a little faster. We fly 975 kilometers per hour. That's 606 miles per hour for the Americans watching. I am Echo 3. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.